السلام علیکم و رحمت الله و برکاته. Thank you very much for hosting me at your beautiful services on this Jum'a day. I am deeply, deeply grateful to Imam Inam Tohak Kasser for inviting me to participate with you and to be able to address you on this occasion. I commend him for his leadership and his true commitment to dialogue and democracy. It is a privilege to be among you and I look forward to a continuing exchange together with you in the months and years to come. And I will also be here afterward if you have any questions or comments or criticisms. Very glad to share ideas with you and very grateful again to be here on this day. As you can see, I am an Orthodox Jew. I grew up in a Jewish neighborhood in Skokie and attended Solomon Schechter Day School where I had a wonderful education in a wonderful religious institution. I went to public high school at Niles North where I was able to continue studying Hebrew. And after finishing college at Harvard, I studied at a Jewish yeshiva, or seminary, in Jerusalem in 1999, before departing for South Africa in 2000 as a Rotary Foundation ambassadorial scholar. When I was in Jerusalem that year, it seemed that peace was just around the corner. Every evening as I walked home on the promenade overlooking the city, I met Arabs from Israel as well as from Jordan. There was a new openness, a feeling of anticipation in the air. A year later, when I was in South Africa, the Second Intifada began, and I watched events in the Middle East from a distance with a feeling of loss and frustration. At that point, my housemates returned to the United States to get married, and my landlord told me he wanted to sell the property. So I took the opportunity to find new accommodations in Iran, renting a room with a Muslim family in an entirely Muslim neighborhood. At first, this did not seem like the most likely arrangement. Yet I got along so well with my landlady and her wonderful family that we decided to give it a try. For two years, that is where I lived. I woke up each morning to the sound of the Nathan, the call to prayer, from the two mosques in the neighborhood. And on Friday evening, I would walk to my Orthodox synagogue about two miles away where I had begun leading the Jewish Sabbath services. I felt that I was able to be myself, a Jewish American, and to learn about Islam at the same time, to bridge the great divide between civilizations that was beginning to widen elsewhere. When it came time for Ramadan, I felt that I could not stand to eat while my landlady and her family did without. And so I fasted with them, joining them at the Yutal meal at the end of every day. I participated for two years in a row, and in addition to losing a good deal of weight, I also gained a great deal of insight into the peace and serenity that is at the heart of the Islamic faith. It was an experience I shall always remember fondly. At the same time, I finished my studies and I began work as a freelance journalist. The year was 2001 and the UN World Conference Against Racism came to the city of Durban in South Africa. I went to cover the event and what I saw there shocked me and changed my life. I saw protests of 15,000 people, not just against Israel, which was singled out at the conference, but also against Jews in the bloodiest terms imaginable. A week later, on 9-11, I watched in horror as terrorists destroyed the World Trade Center and attacked the Pentagon, killing thousands of Americans and people from all over the world. What was even worse was hearing politicians and journalists in South Africa blaming America for the attacks and rejoicing at the terrible loss. I wanted nothing more at that point than to be back home among friends and family, facing the crisis together. Then something happened that moved me very deeply. My landlady called me when she heard about the attacks. She was very, very sad and wanted me to know how sorry she was about what had happened. <coughs> when I came home, my Muslim neighbors came to me and actually apologized to me, though of course nothing that had happened had been their fault. They wanted me to know that they rejected what a few had done in the name of Islam. I was quite touched, and I felt I wanted to do more to help people understand each other. I began to study Arabic with the local Imam. I started getting involved in interfaith dialogue with Muslims, Christians, and Jews. I studied history and even traveled to Spain to visit the old Andalusian cities where the three faiths had once coexisted. In the process, I learned how much we shared.